All right, there we go. Okay, um, my talk's gonna be a little different. There'll be no YAML files in my talk. It's gonna be maybe a little light on technical things. It's more about how the workloads are evolving and how we're trying to you know, prepare for that. And so the background here is um, a lot of these slides come from, we're in the middle of the procurement for our next system, which is the procurement, it's called Nurse 10, and that's what you see on the bottom right. And you know, the story here we're telling is we've gone some from you know, a few systems back where it was predominantly a mod sim kind of workload. And then we started introducing sort of data and experimental analysis into our workload, and then more recently AI. And increasingly we see these things as coupled. It's not like people are just doing one or the other, these things are tied together. <clears throat> so um, I think this, the other thing that's going on is um, we're starting to, we have workloads where they want to couple say a light source or an instrument at another facility and then use the computational resources at, at our facility to um, support that, that uh, research and those workflows. So the workflows are becoming a lot more connected and uh, complex. This is just some, I'll probably skip through these kind of quickly, but it just gives you a snapshot of like what the workload looks like today. There's still quite a bit of, it's dominated by a, a number of applications that where most of the hours go, especially uh, material science, uh, milk is QCD, climate. So you, we still have these kind of power players that use up um, most of the cycles, but there's a, a long tail to it. And then, um, you know, we have a mixture of things that, a lot that have moved over to GPUs, but not everything. So we still have a blend. And I'll talk a little bit, I'll get to how these connect to uh, containers and orchestration in just a bit. And then lastly, you know, we have a mix of concurrency, but a lot of it is still coming from, you know, things running at what we term capability, where it's, I think, an eighth of the size of the system or, or larger. Um, and then increasingly, we're seeing more and more uh, AI workloads. And so this is just meant to kind of illustrate that. Unfortunately, we don't have, on our Perlmutter system, the the mechanisms we use to collect a lot of uh, analytics and instruments, that hasn't been working, and so we've got some gaps here. That's why some of this only goes up to 2021. But we just now recently got those things fixed, so hopefully we'll have a, a better view of what people are doing on the system soon. And then we have increasingly people that are using, uh, you know, coming in through Jupyter Hub, that's the main interface and the way they use the system. So it's not just people, you know, sort of you know, at the command line doing SSH. Increasingly, we have uh, a lot of users coming in through Jupyter. In fact, this shows the kind of statistics of it. I think on a given month, we have like 700 users that will come in through, um, through Jupyter. So it's a sizable portion of the active user base. And then the Super Facility API is an, an our API to allow um, kind of API-driven uh, workloads. All right, this is the main thing that I wanted to do. Um, I won't go through these in detail, but this is uh, one of the things for this procurement that we came up with was these archetype workflows. And there's a paper out there that you can download. It's still labeled draft, but you know, the contents haven't really changed. And so, I, I, you know, maybe we can bring this up more in discussion, but uh, we've got our sort of traditional at the top, the sort of traditional mod sim type workloads, but then you have, more, you know, these other examples show how they're integrating either a data analysis or AI into those workflows. And then also more complex kind of uh, orchestrated set of uh, services. So that last one is, we don't have users doing this um, totally today, but this is where we see things having where they're doing sort of event triggered workflows and they wanna integrate the system uh, into that. And so this is that white paper. So if people are interested in, and uh, you could Google it and find it, uh, but if you can't, let me know and I'll, I'll send you the link. And this last one is just a way to sort of illustrate this cross-facility kind of use case. So here, in this case, I think it's a, you know, like a tokamak. I think this is like D3D, which is a you know, tokamak fusion uh, instrument. And they're wanting to you know, integrate analysis and AI in the loop to help make and inform real-time decisions that they're doing as they operate the system. So um, this is sort of showing all the different pieces of capabilities we need or want to have to, to be able to support that. So we need things to support real time. We need ways to drive um, analysis. Here you start to see containers. In the previous one, some of the use cases rely heavily on orchestration capabilities. 
um, et cetera. So I'll just leave it with that, and then we can, if people have questions, we can touch on it in the discussion.